Hello students. In our last session, we had discussed the exercise questions of the chapter The Leaf. In today's session, we are going to discuss some important questions of the chapter The Cell. So for that, first question is why is the cell membrane called selectively permeable membrane? Cell membrane is known as selectively permeable membrane because it allows only selective materials to pass through it. Next question is name the scientists who formulated the cell theory. Three scientists are there M. Slayton. T. Swan and R. Virchow. Next question is What are the main points of the cell theory? Three points are there. First point All living things are composed of cells. Second point The cell is the structural and functional unit of living things. And the third point is All cells come from the division of pre-existing cells. Next question, what are cell organelles? A cell organelle is a complex structure present inside the cell having a specific function. Then, give an account of different kinds of plastids present in plant cells. So there are three types of plastids present in plant cells. First is chloroplast, contain chlorophyll that is a green pigment that absorbs sunlight. It is responsible for photosynthesis and produce glucose. Next is chromoplast that contains red, orange, yellow pigments present in fruits and flowers and is responsible for their bright colors. Then leucoplast. It is colorless plastic, contains no pigments, present mainly in roots and underground stems, store food in the form of starch, protein and fats. Next question is, name any five cell organelles along with their functions. So for that, I have made one table to show the name of the organelle and their corresponding functions. So first cell organelle is cell membrane which provides protection, helps in transportation of materials. Then cell wall provides rigidity, strength, structural support and protection to the plant cell. Then nucleus, it controls and coordinates all the cellular activities and helps in cell division. Next is chloroplast, helps in photosynthesis and lastly mitochondria that produce energy from the food by respiration process. Next is explain the various parts of nucleus with labeled diagram. So nucleus mainly consists of three sorry four parts nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, nucleolus and chromatin material. So first is nuclear membrane. It surrounds the nucleus. It is permeable and contains nuclear pores. Then nucleoplasm. It is colorless, dense fluid bounded by nuclear membrane. Then nucleolus. It is membraneless, spherical body present in nucleoplasm. It is made up of RNA and proteins. It produces ribosomes. Full form of RNA already I have told in my video that is the ribonucleic acid. Next is chromatin material. It is network of thread like structures composed of genetic materials. In dividing cells Chromatin material is highly condensed to form chromosomes. 
which contain hereditary units known as genes so here is the label diagram of the nucleus that is very important diagram from this chapter so first nuclear membrane you can see here one is outer membrane this one and another one is inner membrane that is this one and in between this outer and inner membrane there is perinuclear space and in the membrane pores are present which are known as nuclear pores these are the nuclear pores gaps present in between the membranes then inside the membrane there is ground substance nucleoplasm here it is written nucleoplasm this full ground substance in which this spherical body nucleolus is present and this thread like structures are present which are known as chromatin materials next one more diagram that is the diagram of chloroplast chloroplast also contains two membranes one is outer membrane another one is inner membrane and in between outer and inner membrane there is intermembrane space this one chloroplast mainly contains two regions one is grana one is stroma what is grana grana actually is the stack of flattened sacs or disc known as thylakoid so thylakoids are the units of grana what is this lamella lamella joins one grana with the other one and what is stroma it is the aqueous fluid that is the ground substance in which grana are present it also contains some photosynthetic enzymes also and in the wall of that thylakoid in that lumen only chlorophyll pigments are present now next question is why are the chloroplasts are known as kitchen of the cell chloroplasts are known as kitchen of the cell as they manufacture food using carbon dioxide and water like that why are mitochondria known as powerhouse of the cell mitochondria are known as powerhouse of the cell as these are the place of respiration in which food is broken down to release energy next there are two functions one is the function of cell membrane one is the function of cell wall so what are the functions of cell membrane first cell membrane controls the movement of substances in and out of the cell it protects the internal contents of the cell it helps in maintenance of cell shape cell mobility secretion and absorption of different substances it acts as the attachment surface of several extracellular structures like cell wall then the functions of the cell wall first function it provides support and protection to the cell then it also provides the cell a definite shape and size strength and rigidity it plays important role in absorption secretion and transportation and it maintains water pressure or osmotic pressure of the cell next very important two diagrams one is the label diagram of plant cell and another one is the label diagram of animal cell so plant cell mainly you can see the important features that is the presence of cell wall out of the cell membrane central vacuole is present for that the nucleus is shifted to the boundary or periphery this is the nucleus this is the central vacuole these are the chloroplasts present in the plant cells 
this is the cytoplasm these are the mitochondria like that and for animal cells main feature no cell wall is present out of the cell membrane so the animal cell is covered only by cell membrane nucleus is centrally located because it contains small small vacuoles which are scattered on the site of in the cytoplasm it contains centrioles or centrosome which you can't observe in the plant cell animal cell also contains lysosome which is also absent in the plant cell so like that mitochondria cytoplasm all are present here also so according to the structure mainly what are the differences in between the plant cell and the animal cell very important question so for that three columns i have meant one is for the criteria one for plant cell and one for animal cell so according to the first criteria that is size and shape plant cell is larger having definite shape animal cell is smaller do not have definite shape cell wall for plant cell it is present for animal cell absent plastids in plant cell it is present for animal cell it is absent vacuoles for plant cell few large and permanent and for animal cell many small and temporary vacuoles centrosome in plant cell it is absent in animal cell it is present lysosome it is absent in plant cell it is present in plant animal cell and at last the carbohydrate storage carbohydrate is stored in plant cell as starch and in animal cell as glycogen next difference is in between cell wall and cell membrane first point it is present in plant cell cell membrane present in both plant and animal cell cell wall is made up of cellulose cell membrane is made up of lipids and proteins cell wall is non living and permeable cell membrane is living and semi permeable and cell wall is rigid and thick cell membrane is flexible and thin next difference is in between chloroplast and chromoplast chloroplast mainly present in leaves and young stems chromoplast mainly present in colorful fruits and flowers chloroplast contains mainly green pigment chlorophyll chromoplast contains red orange and yellow pigments chloroplast is responsible for photosynthesis chromoplast is responsible for bringing color to the parts where it is present next is the difference in between plant vacuoles and animal vacuoles plant cells contain a large single vacuole animal cells contain several small vacuoles for plant plant vacuoles is a permanent structure and animal vacuoles are the temporary structures plant vacuoles generally occur in the center of plant cell that's why it is known as central vacuole and for animal cell animal vacuoles are distributed or scattered all over the cell next difference is in between prokaryotes and eukaryotes first most prokaryotes are unicellular most eukaryotes are multicellular the nucleus is poorly defined due to the absence of nuclear membrane here the nucleus is well defined and is surrounded by nuclear membrane for prokaryotes nucleolus is absent for eukaryotes nucleolus is present for prokaryotes cell organelles such as plastids mitochondria golgi bodies etc are absent and for eukaryotes all cell organelles are present example of prokaryotes bacteria blue green algae example of eukaryotes 
fungi plant cells animal cells are the examples of eukaryotic cells so by that today we are ending our session bye and have a nice day